film. I, I teared up a lot, actually. That was really awesome, and it was really touching. Um, and yeah, it's really inspiring to see that I think that make it hard, especially like when you're in high school and college and you're coming up. So. Great. Terrific. Thank you. open it up to the audience for questions. I'd like to share a story with you because I think it's really important to what a number of these women have said tonight. And it's about standing on the shoulders of others. We, when we decided to do the recreation of the Great Day in Harlem photo that our king, the iconic photo, I mean, we looked, Judy and I looked at each other and said, you know, how is this going to happen? We didn't pay for anyone to come. No one was paid to either get there or to be there. Everyone came on her own to be a part of it, except for the three men. And they also came on their own, but we didn't pay for them either. But the major part of it was is that they, they, they just wanted to be there. It was a moment of joy and grace. What you saw in the film, when the people came together at that church that we we gathered all the women at before we walked up the street on 126th Street to the same stoop where the iconic film or photo was taken. All these women came in. We had tables with snacky things on them, things to eat. No one ate a thing. Everyone just came to see each other and to share. The room was filled with love and grace and joy and gratitude, and I get goosebumps every time I see it and talk about it, because it is about the shoulders we stand on. And I was reminded about it at that very moment. But we walked up the street, there they were, they get into place, Judy says, take your place. She didn't say, go where you want, you know, you stand here, you stand here. She let people kind of go where they, we found out later that there were women who stood in places of men that they admired, men musicians, and didn't know it until afterwards. So I mean, there was magic that took place. And then it's an awful, it's August 8th in 2008. It's a hot New York day. Sun is just, you know, sweltering. And we know it's going to be an awful photo because you know what bright light does to photos. And then a cloud comes over just at the moment, click the picture, and it starts to rain. And off we go. And it wasn't until afterwards we found out that it was exactly 50 years to the day that the iconic Red Dane Harlow photo was taken. So we, we feel it's magic, you know? Somehow it's magic. It was meant to be. And I thought you'd like to know that story before we open up to the audience for questions. To the women and to anything. So if you have a question, just raise your hand. There's someone right there. Right there. I have a question which has a little bit of a background. Wait, we have, we, have, we have two people talking at the same time. Let's I just put forward. Do you want it? Okay, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll Stand up, please. So first I wanted to give you props because we're all grooving on the awesome music, but your filmmaking, taking that archival material and putting it in maps and putting it in scrapbooks, it was such beautiful storytelling, it really made the past come alive. I do have a question, my second prop is, is that I think most of us that know, maybe I'm just a sliver, like that there was the international Sweethearts of Rhythm, mm. I for one only thought that that happened during World War II when there was no uh, when all the men were off in war and so the women came in. So thank you also for giving us historical context to go all the way back to uh, Monet Armstrong, which I did not know. Right. So thank you so much for the broader picture. Um, two questions for you. Um, one is just that I didn't get and the other is broader. What brought you into this subject? What got you excited about telling the story? And then clarify for me, there was a musician who said, who President was saying thank you uh, to the women who went up those stairs to get their mm -hmm. what was she, really, what would she say in that? That wasn't as clear as everything else in the story. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what, what yeah, I'm 
remember the yes, yeah. when Nedra, Nedra said that I'm so thankful. Oh, that oh, 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 oh. She's yeah. referring oh, to Nedra's not having comment. to pay yeah, okay. for her sexual. Okay, I'll. I'll oh, was yes. yes. Yeah, that women had to go upstairs to collect their paycheck. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, my first, the first question that she asked, and which we do get asked all the time, is how did this whole project get started? I come from a family of musicians. Every one of us was trained in music. I played trumpet as a kid. And um, when I grew up, I saw this was not a place for a woman to be. And besides, I like filmmaking a lot more. So I, I left the trumpet behind. But all my brothers are musicians. My son's a musician. I married a musician. Music has been part of my life. And I've seen every big band there ever was. I'm a real big band fan. So one day a friend of mine called me up and said, I met a woman last night who's 80 years old and said she was a big band drummer in the 1940s. And I laughed. And I said, yeah, maybe in a marching band. And she said, no, this woman said she played in a big jazz band. So we looked her up and she had played in an all-girl band, not even a famous one, but she had played in an all-girl band. And I thought, what? What, what kind of all-girl band? Was there more than one? And that was the beginning of the film. And the, the, the story that unfolded for us was so amazing to us that we thought other people would like it too. Yeah.